Welcome. Today I'd like to talk about extending Pythagoras' theorem into the third dimension. And when I say this, most people think I'm going to do the following, which I guess I am because I'm about to do it. Um, one way to think about th a three-dimensional version of Pythagoras' theorem is to actually uh, talk about a rectangular box. And I could ask in this box, well, let me give you some side lengths. Suppose this is 3 inches, and this is 4 inches, and the whole thing is 12 inches high, so don't trust the scale of my box here. What is the length of the longest stick that can fit in this box? And such a stick would have to probably go from corner to corner like this. So I'd like to know, what's the length d of that diagonal line through that box? Well, this really is a three-dimensional version of Pythagoras' theorem in the following sense. I can actually get to this result by looking at a right triangle that's sitting in the interior of this box as follows. Da, 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 da. I know this right triangle has height 12, but I need to know the length of its base there. Well, that's easy to work out because that is itself is part of a right triangle, a flat right triangle sitting on the bottom of the box like this. So I actually work out this length d, it will be the square root according to Pythagoras of 3 squared plus 4 squared. I chose nice numbers, that's 5, which means d would be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. I uh, chose really nice numbers, that's the square root of 169 is 13. So this length is 13, which is really computed by doing Pythagoras' theorem twice. Uh, in more abstract terms, da, 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 if I asked what is the longest line that fits in a box of more general directions, uh, dimensions A, B, and C, I would first work out the length of this baseline, and by Pythagoras, that's the square root of A squared plus B squared, and then I ought to get the longest line in this box, I'll then use this interior triangle as so, and that length there, d, would be the square root of its base squared, so square root of a squared plus b squared squared is a squared plus b squared, plus its side length squared, c squared. And if you like, I can rewrite this as d squared is a squared plus b squared plus c squared, which really is a three-dimensional version of the ordinary way of Pythagoras, because normally we think of Pythagoras as a right triangle, which is part of a rectangle, the length of the longest line of rectangle, c, has, follows the formula c squared is a squared plus b squared. All right, right, that's the easy way to think of Pythagoras in the third dimension. Let me give an unusual way. What I'm about to express right now is actually uh, due to a fellow in the 1700s whose name I don't actually know how to pronounce, which is bad of me because I should find out before I make such videos, de Gua, de Gua. He was born in 1712, lived about 1785. And he discovered something really cool, another way to think of a three-dimensional version of Pythagoras. Let me show you what he's done. Um, it's, of course, it's about triangles. But imagine I drew a three-dimensional picture um, using three axes, x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And we have a triangle sitting right in the corner of such a setup. So it's like having a triangle sitting in the corner of the room. Suppose it's a inches along the x-axis, b inches along the y-axis, and c inches along the z-axis. And I'm going to try to work out the area of this triangle. I'll do it using very elementary techniques, but if you actually know the formula for the distance of a point from a plane, um, there's an easy way to do it if you know some 3D um, uh, algebra. Anyhow, let me go through very elementary techniques. Let's work at the area of the sloping triangle sitting in the corner of the room. Uh, here goes. I'm going to need its height, do, 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 and I'm going to need to its base, but I, this, this height I'll call h splits the base into two pieces, x and y. Now we're going for fun and games. I see the little right triangle here, x inches, h inches, and this side here. So by ordinary Pythagoras, x squared plus h squared is this third side squared. And if you can see, uh, that's really a squared plus c squared by doing Pythagoras. a inches squared plus c inches squared is this diagonal length on the side. One equation. Do it for y's. y squared plus h squared will be this side length that side squared, but by Pythagoras that's uh, actually c squared plus b squared. So b squared plus c squared. And thirdly, this length x plus y is uh, by Pythagoras the square root of a squared plus b squared, if you look at this triangle here. Right, so that's three applications of ordinary Pythagoras in two dimensions, all done in different planes. What I'm going to do now is solve for x and y and try to get a formula for h so I can then actually work out the area of that slopey triangle. Here goes. Let's look at this formula. 
Um, y squared plus h squared equals b squared plus c squared. Let's uh, substitute a formula for y in. So that's really telling me that the square root of a squared plus b squared minus x squared plus h squared is b squared plus c squared. Uh, let me expand this out. Uh, a squared plus b squared minus 2x, the square root of a squared plus b squared, I'm being lazy, plus x squared plus h squared must be b squared plus c squared. Uh, x squared plus h squared, I recognize that. That's a squared plus c squared. All right, so I see some common terms here. For example, uh, c squared can go, uh, b squared can go. So I've got 2a squared minus 2x, the square root stuff, is 0. That tells me x is actually a squared over the square root stuff, which is a squared plus b squared. Not too painful. Uh, if I go back to this formula, y must be... Uh, a squared of a squared plus b squared minus x, which is this. I'll put over common denominator and a little bit of work, not much actually shows that y is actually b squared over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So far, so good. Now, uh, I've got a formula for x, I've got a formula for y, let's get a formula for h. Uh, let's go back to say I know the first equation. h squared is a squared plus c squared minus x squared. I have a formula for x squared, so that's a squared plus c squared minus uh, a to the fourth on a squared plus b squared. Things are now getting a little messy. I need some more space. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. So let me do this. And since it's a mess, I'm also just make it messy, a colorful mess by changing color. Let's put this over a common denominator of a squared plus b squared. So I will get a squared plus c squared times a squared plus b squared minus a to the fourth. I will expand this out. Do, 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 do. a squared plus b squared on the denominator. a squared times a squared is a to the fourth minus a to the fourth, gone. So let's get all the cross terms. So basically I get a squared plus times b squared, a squared times c squared, and b squared times c squared. <sighs> There's a formula for h squared. So I'm now all set to work out the area of that slopey triangle. And what does this have to do with a three-dimensional version of Pythagoras? We get to see. All right, here goes. Um, let me do this in purple this time. So the area of the slopey triangle, which I'll call A, would be half its base, x plus y, times h. All right, so that's half. x plus y is square root of a squared plus b squared times h, which is the square root ugh, of a squared b squared, a squared c squared, a, uh, b squared, c squared, all over a squared plus b squared. Well, the nice thing is that those cancels out. And what I've really got here is the area is one half the square root of a squared, b squared, plus a squared, c squared, plus b squared, c squared. This is actually gorgeous. Let me uh, multiply by two and square everything. That tells me that uh, four a squared is a squared, b squared, plus a squared, c squared, plus b squared, c squared. And what I'm going to do now is give myself more space yet again and rewrite that in a clever, clever way. Let's take that 4 and divide everything by 4. So that's telling me the area of the slopey triangle squared, whoops, I need my pen, is ab over 2 squared plus ac over 2 squared plus bc over 2 squared. And I love this because I, I have a geometric interpretation for each of these. Half times A times B. Half times A times B is the area of this bottom triangle. Um, let me call that uh, B. So that's the area of the bottom triangle squared. Plus half times A times C, that's the area of the side triangle. Let me call that triangle C. And half times B times C is the area of this face here. We call that area D. So actually, de Guerre had discovered that the area of a slopey triangle is just the sum of the areas of its three side triangles. That is, if I was to draw this neatly and lovelily, I don't know if that's a word, he's saying if you take any old box, where's my pen gone? And sort of chop off a corner like the following. Uh, Oops, oops. Oh, that's really bad. Let's, let's get rid of that. Ah, oh, oops, oops. This is boring viewing. Let me do this one more time. 
Sorry, guys. Da, 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 da. Um, what am I drawing? Let me draw. Oh, why can't I draw this? There it goes. So I've got this sort of little three sets of right triangles here. If I call, actually, I'll change my notation. I'll call that area D, call the side, three right triangles on the side, areas A, B, and C. They got discovered that A squared plus B squared plus C squared equals D squared. The area of a slopey triangle sitting in the corner of a rectilinear system of right triangles is given by what looks like a three-dimensional version of Pythagoras. Lots of fun. Thanks very much.